Hi everyone, and welcome back to All Things Frugal and Fabulous. First, I wanted to say I am sorry I haven't been making lots of videos this week. A few reasons why. We've just not only been busy with back to school and back to work and all that, a few things popped up that were a little bit disappointing. And we got some other bad news regarding a family member, but, um... We will survive and get through everything, and today, I guess, kind of because of some of the circumstances that have happened, I wanted to talk about what to do in extreme circumstances when maybe you, there's a loss of income or whatever reason you might have uh, that where you are maybe a job loss or you know a death of a partner and they have no life insurance or, or whatever the reasons there are many different reasons that you might come into extreme circumstances I've come into a few and these are all things that I had to do at one point or another and might and will probably I still actually do all of these. Some of them I don't need anymore, but we'll get to that when we get. So this is for anybody who, you know, is already kind of living a frugal lifestyle and really they just don't know what else to do. There is always a way to save more money, even if it's, you know, 10 cents here and there or 20. I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but really every little tiny bit of money helps, whether it's a dollar, ten dollars, a hundred dollars, obviously the more you save, the more it is better beneficial to you. But if you're saving ten cents, you know, a hundred times or you know, and just saying that some things add up more than others, but of course most of you know that. So let's get started. First thing well, these are in no real particular order. They're just how I remembered and they came out. So number one I have is lower all of your expenses by either canceling or having them lowered to all of your unnecessary categories. For example, cable, entertainment, clothing, internet, subscriptions, gym memberships and stop all unnecessary spending. So when I really had no money, I canceled all of these. I canceled cable, I canceled pretty much all my entertainment. We didn't go out unless it was free, and we stopped buying clothing, completely canceled internet, any subscri subscriptions that I had, and even my gym membership. And now I actually just started working out at home again. And basically, just stop spending unless it's for food. And when I say food, I don't mean going out through the drive through I mean, you know, food that will help you throughout the week and is not going to dent your budget. Number two, call and get your debt interest rates lowered. And get your other necessary bills lowered as much as possible. When I say necessary bills, I mean maybe you need a cell phone because you don't have a home phone. So what I did, I called and I got the absolute lowest, cheapest plan that I could possibly be on. I didn't use data. I just, you know, for phone calling and text messaging if I needed, that was it. And, you know, if you have to do that for a while, you have to do that. You can always change it when your circumstances changes. And, you know, if you can go without a phone completely, then go without a phone. But that being my only source of phone and needing it for school and work, then I needed something. But I did not use it during the day unless I absolutely needed it. And basically, I lowered my car insurance. I got the highest deductible. I 
took all the extras off of it and got the lowest um, insurance that I could get. I lowered my internet and at one point I actually did get rid of it, but I lowered it first until I realized, you know, it just wasn't enough. And if you can, if you're paying hydro, uh, you could, and you've been living in your place for over a year already, you can call and get, I can't remember the name, but they take a, an average of your total bills throughout the year and they make it into one payment that you make consistently and it's the same amount and I can't think of the name right now but you can do that so that you know exactly how much it's going to be every year or every month I should say. Number three, there are so many free resources out there and a lot of people might not know about them or they might be ashamed to use them whatever the reason but they are there you just need to find them and you need to utilize them like a library free entertainment and free things for your children free book reading whatnot there's food banks that are out there in every community there is a food bank that I've ever gone to they all have food banks you just need to know who to ask there's, you know, dental centers that offer free days and free services. The churches are a great resource if, if, they're, if you're in need. I have found they t are very helpful when, when we were in need. Resource centers for clothing or whatever it is, they will, can tell you where to go. And, yeah, just... You know, look up what you need, Google it, and there's so many different resources in every community, um, and especially, I don't know about the states, but in Canada, in Manitoba, where I'm from, there's so many different ways that you can get help, like there's really no need to, you know, not have food or not have clothing, because there's free places to get everything if you need it. You can even get um, free work clothing. You can go for free training, but I'll get it to that. So number four, um, get your finances in order. Write down every debt, both personal and non. Like when I say personal and non-personal, I mean like if you borrowed from a family member is what I mean by personal. And then non-personal would be like banks and loans through the bank or like credit cards and all that stuff. So write down everything, even if it's just, you know, you borrowed $40 from a friend or your, your family member, write that down and that is included in your debt because you have to pay that back, you know. It goes both ways. When you borrow money and you don't pay it back and then people do that to you. So write every cent that you owe down. And then also write every source of income. Like even if you are doing some side hustle and you know maybe you're only making a few dollars a month from it, include that in your budget. Include every dollar and maybe just make that extra income that you are making goes towards savings if you want it, if you were already doing that way. But include it in your budget so that you know exactly what you owe and exactly what you're bringing in every single month. My budget I do um, like a month ahead. So I'm using this month's income for next month. Or yeah, a month ahead of everything. So every dollar that I make this month, I'm not using this month. It's being, I've already paid for all my bills and now everything that I need in August will be used for September. I will do a video on my budget one of these days, maybe September, we'll see. Number five, you know, a lot of people look down on this and, you know, because there's a lot of stigmas or stereotypes about it, but if you have to get on social assistance, then you 
then you have to. Like if you lost your job and you've been looking and you can't find anything and your EI runs out or whatever happens or maybe you couldn't get EI, then you know what? Social assistance was invented for you know, temporary relief to help you get back on your feet. That's what it was meant for. Not to live off of for the rest of your days, but just for a temporary, t like, assistance. I ha was on it for six months, and then when I got back on my feet, I went off of it as soon as possible because I just needed it when I wasn't working and I was having trouble finding a job. And the job that I had before, there was no EI coming off. So I wasn't even getting EI or anything. So, and I had a daughter. So I had really no choice unless, you know, I needed something. So that is what it's there for. If you, you only need it for three months or even a month or even two months. Yes, there's a lot of paperwork, but it is there for you for when you need it. And then you get off of it as soon as you possibly can. And they, I, by going on it, you are open to all the other resources out there because they can point you in the right direction to what you need. And this is in an extreme case. You can't, even if you own your home, they do put a lien on your home so that if you don't, if you use them and abuse them, they can take your house away. That is, you know, because they don't want to get screwed over and there are people out there that do do that so you don't want to do that but you can use it to get back on your feet and that's what it's there for there's other programs that can help you as well uh, to find jobs upgrade your education um, you can get subsidy for if you have children for your childcare you can even get subsidy for your rent if you're paying rent there's all kinds of different things that are out there as I mentioned of the free resources there's also stuff to help there when you need it you just have to look and um, yeah number six I have sell your possessions like sell everything that you don't need I if you have a lot of books or a lot you know as much as you might want them. I mean, I've been selling movies for years now, and you know, I every time I sell them as much as I can, or I'll sell, I've sold pretty much all my other expensive electronics, furniture, all kinds of stuff, and I'm trying to get down to just the bare minimum. And I'm still selling things and getting rid of things because, you know, right now, come into a situation in our own lives where we might have to downsize even more again to get to where we want to go and um, also you can move to a cheaper home or get subsidized housing or if possible move with a family member you know as much as we don't want to do these things sometimes we just have to in order to save money and move ahead and it's okay. That is okay to do any of these things. And that is what they're there for. The, all of these things are there for people who need them. And if you need, truly need them, then go and do it. Sorry about that. And number seven, take any job. And I mean, well, huh. As long as it, you know, stands with your own morals and whatnot, take any job. I mean, I was insulating I, for like a year in the hot, wet, hottest summer weather to the coldest, minus 40 below um, Manitoba weather. I've worked as a dishwasher. I've taken, you know, all of the, you know, crummiest jobs that I could think of. I've cleaned bathrooms. I've done all kinds of things just to, I was working three or four jobs at one time just to make an income and get out of where I was. Last and not least, remember that this is a season in your life and don't feel bad or defeated or guilty and take this as an experience in your life and learn from it. And Use it. If you have children, teach them. Teach them, you know, from your mistakes. Say, you know, 
don't go buying all these movies. Don't be going out and spending all your money on eating out every night. You know, this is, if you want to go. Hi, everyone. I got cut off there, and I do not, my phone would not let me upload the rest. But anyway, as I was saying, it's just a season, and it won't last for long. So keep your spirits up, and... Remember, things will get better. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I look forward to seeing you all next time. Have a wonderful day and evening. See you next time. Bye.